Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I am from ExitAutomation.com and today in our ExitAutomation.com we are going to talk about Cycle. Cycle is a startup company and they are focusing mainly on containers. Since we are in our Exit Automation channel, are discussing about containers a lot, like understanding the ABC of Docker video series and Docker on Windows. Cycle is kind of interesting and the company itself has sent me a coupon code to give a try and see how Cycle works. So what is Cycle? Well in a nutshell, Cycle is it another container deployment platform and they call itself as a container as a service platform. Well what makes Cycle.io so special from Docker? Because so far in our Docker video series in our Exit Automation channel, we have been talking about Dockers and containers and Windows containers a lot. But what makes Cycle.io so special? Well, Cycle.io is more than just another container deployment tool and Cycle does it all. Ensure your user experience peak performance by intelligently routing traffic to the geographically closest instance via GeoDNS and it also do encryption of your sensitive communication with, with automated SSL and TLS certification for all the containers. And using Cycle.io, we can also scale down and scale up the traffic demand fluctuations and we can also perform the repairing of container instances if there happens any unexpected changes on the containers. So as that said, Cycle is very, very easy to deploy, manage and monitor the applications without need for any stack of third party services. And that's what Cycle is doing. Whereas in Docker, it's like a core service, right? We just pull the image from the Docker Hub and just install in our machine or we can also deploy that in the Azure or AWS or any other cloud platforms and we perform the operation. Whereas Cycle it's more like a interactive way of performing the container operations by downloading the even images even from hub.docker.com and you can run the containers images within cycle.io. So all happens in a simple and much intuitive UI or even using APIs. So yes, no more PowerShell command prompts, all done via a simple UI using cycle. So let's see this in action and understand how things work. So for that, I'm going to flip to Chrome. So let me type cycle.io in our browser. There we go. And this is the site and you can see that they have a very, very simple UI like get started and you can launch your applications and it tells about the cycle platform that we discussed before. And as I already said, they have a portal which is an UI based and there is an API which can be done using the postman or fiddler or something like that. So you can perform that operation as well, right? And it's very, very simple as of now. All you have to do is just click this get started and it'll ask you whether do you have an account already. So it's basically going to the portal.cycle.io sign up page. And I actually have one account, but right now for the demonstration purpose, I'm gonna create one. And there is a sign up code which the company has sent me personally. So I'm going to use that and I'm not going to really show you that. And then I'm going to click the get started button and I'm also going to select the I'm not robot button. There we go. Simple. Now you can see that our portal.cycle.io has taken me to the dashboard of the cycle.io portal. And now you can see that it says that the verification email has been sent and it's not been verified. I'm going to quickly go and see if I got any email and I will activate this and I will come back later here. All right. It took a while for getting me my verification email and finally I got verified myself with cycle.io. And now you can see that I can start deploying the containers and commanding global infrastructure. And currently this is a two week trial free. And since I have some credit, I can still use even after the trial. So thanks to Cycle.io team for giving me such a great provision. And now the first thing which I'm going to do is I'm going to create an environment. As you can see right now, okay, before that, let me go to the dashboard. You can see in the dashboard, I have a resource usage. So for a trial user, the resource is limited to 3 GB of image store and the bandwidth is 50 GB, right? So you cannot keep on adding a lot of containers like server containers that is like 10 GB. So for sure server containers you cannot even add in the cycle.io because it's only limited to 3 GB. So you know you cannot even use it. So we are going to play around with a very very small image for a quick start. Alright so let me go to the environment. So the first thing which you're going to do is to create an environment 
And it is something like this. So if you have an environment, let's say you are going to name the environment as a production environment or a staging environment, something like that, you can then use it by holding a lot of different containers. So I'm going to say this is a staging environment. So staging env. And I'm going to create the environment here. So only if you create an environment, you can actually create the container within that particular environment. And you can see right now the containers are zero and the instances running are zero because we don't have any. And if I go to the images here, you can see there is something called as Docker images and there is a repos. So I'm going to create or I'm going to import a Docker image. I'm not going to really create a repo here, right? Rather, I'm going to pull the image from the Docker, which is very, very easy for me because we have already discussed about working with the Docker's a lot in our earlier video series. So I'm just going to use the same concept here. So all the Docker's are sitting in our hub.docker.com, which we know already. So I'm going to pull that. So I'm going to click this import Docker image and here I'm going to give a name. So let's say I'm going to very, very easily work with a Nginx image. So Nginx. So if I do this, you can see that it will automatically get the Nginx image from the hub.locker.com. So I'm going to click that and this is the, it's automatically taking the tag as latest and I'm going to just import that image. So the same thing is actually coming from this guy, the hub.locker.com. So now you can see that it is automatically showing us what's really happening behind the scene. It is preparing the image, it is downloading it, it's going to build it. It's going to verify it and it's going to save and it's going to clean the instance once it is done. So let's wait for a minute. I guess it should be very, very quick and fast enough. So right now it is deploying this particular image into their own global infrastructure, right? So let's see what's really happening. It's going to take some time. It's the status is saving right now. Boom. Now it is live, which means we are ready to use this image right now for our containers. So if I go to the environment here, we have an environment called staging environment. If I go inside the staging environment, we have something called as create containers. Remember the one I said, only if you have an environment, you can create different containers. And these environments can be separated into staging, production, or pre-production, something like that. So I'm gonna do that. I'm going to click this create container button and here I'm going to name this container. Remember in our Docker, we used to give a name for the container using hyphen hyphen name parameter, right? That's exactly this. So I'm going to do the same thing in here. So maybe I'm going to call this as Nginx and the host name, it can be Nginx as well for now. And then you can see there is something called as a DNS upgrade. So I'm not really going to do this for now. I'm just going to leave it as it is. And it says that this is the time I downloaded the image. So this is going to be the one which I have in my uh, images as well. So I'm going to choose that. And the size is 356 MB, which is okay. And here you can see there are different plans. Now comes the billing for Cycle.io. You can limit your container to run in a particular environment, something like a 128 MB of memory, 0.25 uh, physical core, and 100 MB as public container access, and 125 MB of private container access, and 500 MB of base storage. So right now there are different plans, and for the trial users, it is limited to these three plans, not the 1 GB and 2 GB. You can see that you cannot even select that. So I'm going to choose the highest one, the dollar 7.50 USD. I'm going to choose that. And here comes the scaling part. So you can locate your data center as well. If you want to put this in your Chicago, you can put that here. Or if you're going to put that in the North America somewhere or Europe somewhere, you can do that. So it's just categorizing all those options. And I'm going to choose the Chicago for now, even though it is very, very distant from me, from Malaysia. I'm still going to select that. And then I'm going to create this create container. And now it's going to take a while and it's creating a container for you. And once the creating of the container is done, you can see this page will appear. Now you can either start the environment, which means it's going to start all the containers within that environment. And we have only one container, by the way. And if you want to start a specific container, you can click this button, start container. 
So if I click this, but before clicking it, let's see what's really happening there. For the instances, we have no container instance for now. And the configuration is this. So this is the configuration that you can see in our hub.docker.com as well. So if you go to the engine X, so there are some specific configurations for that particular Nginx, right? So those environment variables can also be displayed in this particular configuration page. So let me quickly run this and see what's really happening. Even I'm very excited what's really gonna happen. So it's gonna say container job is in progress. It's gonna start the container. And you can see it has given me a public IP this time. Now you should think of this. Your container is running in the cycle.io portal and you can access the container by using this particular IP address. So right now everything is in the cloud. So I'm gonna copy this and let me quickly see what's really gonna happen. I'm just gonna put this IP address in here as a URL. I'm hit enter. Great, you can see that we have an Nginx in here. So I can see Nginx coming directly from cycle.io. So this is very, very easy. You don't really have to do anything like opening the PowerShell, pulling the image into your local machine and running it. Even if you run that, it is gonna be accessible to you only in your local machine or local environment. But if you want to deploy this or if you want the container to be accessible from outside the world, then you need to put that particular container either into Azure, AWS, or something like that, all those cloud platforms, and then you can access this. And all these complexities or heavy liftings are being done by Cycle.io and it does things for you. But I still have to explore a lot in Cycle.io because as of now, I'm just seeing what's really happening with a simple Nginx. But if I want to link two containers or if I want to run my Windows Server Core container or Nano Server container, how is it gonna happen? I really don't know. I have never tried that. And the reason is because I still have only 3 GB of space and I already used 356 MB of it. And if I use some Jenkins or other images, this is really gonna fill up my 2 GB and I will be left with only 1 GB of space. So surely I cannot even able to try it out. But I hope that Cycle.io is really a great initiative and it's really very easier to use than Docker. So once again guys, thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day.